All right, good evening, everyone. I'm going to call our August 8th Airport Advisory Board meeting to order. Uh, Kayla, can you please call the roll? Chairperson Harrison Earl. Here. Vice Chairperson Melinda Jordan. Here. Board Member Malcolm Dean. Here. Board Member Carla Salamakian. Thank you. Councilmember McCoy, welcome. We're really glad to have you with us and appreciate you stepping in for Marsha and stepping up. So look forward to the discussion with you tonight. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Great. Um, our first item, as always, is a public invited to be heard. There is no sign up list, so we'll have people come up as you want to. Um, I do want to make just one comment up front. I've been informed, as you all know from the city, there is the Modern West 2 topic of conversation that's come up. Because this is quasi-judicial at this point, we actually have a limited set of actions that we can take as a board, as part of the city. Um, we can comment on it as individuals, but not as a board. Um, and so recognize we'll probably hear some feedback on that tonight. Just know we're listening, we're, we're, we're thinking about it. There's very little we can officially comment on um, and encourage everyone to come on the 27th to the city council meeting to make that comment. Did I cover everything, Phil? All right. With that, um, I'll open public invited to be heard if anyone would like to be the first to come on up tonight. And as always, if you um, can kick off the public invited to be heard with your name and address, and you've got five minutes. Thank you. My name is Dan Barry. I live at 930 Champion Circle. I live underneath the traffic pattern at the Longmont Airport on purpose. I actually moved from Louisville 24 years ago because of this airport. And later on, I invested in this airport as a hangar operator and owner. I've been in aviation for 54 years. I have sat in your seats. I've been on the airport board. I am very concerned with what's going on with the city council. So can I comment on the Modern West? You can comment all you want. Okay. Yes. Good to know. So I'm very concerned with this development. It's, uh, it's very dangerous. It sets a very dangerous precedent. I did send a letter to Jennifer Hewitt Apperson and Levi Brown expressing my concerns. I did get feedback from Jennifer that it was put on record. Uh, the, this project is very incongruent. It's extremely incongruent with FAA federal grand lease uh, uh, assurances and compatibility use. I just encourage the airport board, even in your pers personal conversations, find a way to help us uh, build more rapport with the city council. What do they need from us to be supportive of this community? Uh, if we understood that, we could be more supportive. I was heavily involved with the 2016 airport expo uh, when we got the F-16s in here, followed that up with a city council tour of the airport. And that seemed to be very beneficial back in 2016. Maybe it's time to have that conversation and do something like that again. Uh, my, my biggest concern with this development is the, the height of the buildings. Uh, it's in the airport influence zone as well as my neighborhood. Uh, they're proposing buildings that are higher than the current code by 10 feet. And if you look at the traffic pattern, which I'm sure you're all familiar with the past um, master plan that was developed there's a a noise abatement traffic pattern that we do use as pilots at this airport uh, the users of this airport we do use this and we're constantly on the radio encouraging the other visitors to use this pattern this pattern puts this site directly underneath base to downwind for 29 and directly underneath the departure for 1-1 uh, the aircraft arriving at Longmont normally train on a three degree glide slope um, I use a much higher one because I prefer that. However, the heavier aircraft are going to use a three degree glide slope, which puts their aircraft 30 to 50 feet above these buildings. These are 400,000 pound jets, twin engine, less than that weight. Uh, but still, you're having to have aircraft within 30 to 40 feet of these buildings. This is an extremely dangerous precedence. And I have personally helped haul airplanes out of that field. Several years ago, many years ago, Bonanza went in, ran out of fuel, and landed in that airport. And I helped them pull it off to the, uh, in, into the safe zone of the airport. 
So please help us save the airport. Um, I'm more than happy to contribute to creating a different conversation to build rapport with the city council. And I have in the past and I will again. Thank you. Thank you. I just have a quick informational item, if you don't mind me just. Please, and then we'll keep going with public. So my name is Phil Greenwald, Transportation Planning Manager with the city, um, also part of Transportation Planning and Airport. So uh, we do have a connection to this item. I just want to let people know that we just uh, asked Tom, um, Council Member Sean McCoy to recuse himself during the public invited to be heard because as a quasi-judicial piece on the 27th of August, to have him listening in uh, breaks that quasi-judicial uh, rule. So I, I asked him to recuse himself while he was, and he agreed to recuse himself during the public testimony as people are talking about this item. So thank you. Thanks, Phil. And just for the record, I'll know that uh, Matt Menzo joined us. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, my name is Richard Basilier. I live at 420 Nebraska Avenue in Berthoud. I'm the president of LOPA, the Longmont Owners and Pilots Association. I wanted to thank you all very much for the letter, the well-written letter that you sent to city council for us, or for yourself. It was, it was good. It was done well. Um, my question now is that Modern West One has has come up as you know blindsiding us. It's uh, just south of what we're not supposed to talk about, and uh, it's uh, it's just as much a problem. Uh, I guess a couple things that I'd like to ask from from the board is uh, number one, can you find out how the uh, how the paperwork, how the logistics went through, that nobody knew about this. We never got any information from from Levi or from anybody about, you know, that there were this Modern West was anything. We just found out about it weeks ago. So uh, if if you could do that, I you know we'd really appreciate it. We're uh, trying to do the best we can to keep everything safe and and keep the community safe. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good evening, uh, Chairman and Board Members. J.D. Gleit, 1632 Sherman Way, Longmont. First, I'd like to apologize for my lack of support and engagement. It's uh, my intention to stay in communication and more engaged in airport manners, matters. It's been made clear that we need to keep a sharp eye out for adverse actions being taken against the airport. Right now the development is a major factor, but we all need to be supporting you in ensuring that the airport master plan is funded and updated. The city hired consultants, the city's council approved it, and not much has been accomplished. The Modern West Development, Modern West One Development concept plan has been approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission. This development includes a four-story, 306-unit apartment complex just south of the Modern West Two proposal. By itself, it would have a huge negative impact on the noise and safety at the airport. Combined with an adjacent, similar apartment complex in Modern West Two, it will be even worse. Since only property owners within 1,000 feet had to be notified, no one was there to speak to the Planning and Zoning Board commissioners of the negative consequences. The Planning and Development Director may expand or contact or, or contract that did, con, I'm sorry, the planning and development director may expand or contract the distance if the development would impact the community. It's unbelievable that the airport manager, the air hangar owners and businesses were not notified. I do not know about the FAA. The impacted community should have been notified back when the zoning was changed or when Envision Longmont was advocating for changing the zoning in the area near the airport. It was only when one person happened to see a small sign on the side of Rogers Road and attended the Modern West II planning and zoning meeting that we became aware. Modern West, Modern West I concept planned was approved long ago, and we didn't even know about it. I'd like to request the Airport Advisory Board to move to address changes to the development code so that all those that might be impacted by development in the airport influence zone be notified of any development proposals as well as zoning changes. This would include the airport hangar owners, business owners, the airport manager, and FAA. 
of course this would uh, this would happen through the city council but could be started by you and uh, time couldn't be uh, soon enough so I really uh, think that that's going to be uh, we we may or may not have any success with these two but there's going to be more and we need to know about it early so that in order that for that to happen the development code is going to need to be changed and I think this would be a good place to start thank you, thank you. Howard Morgan, 1932 Amethyst Drive, Longmont. Most of the previous uh, speakers have said most everything that I can think of, but here's the deal. Uh, these people, if this was built, and I hope it's not, would move in and sign a document saying they're in the airport influence zone. And uh, we've seen that south of the airport where the people signed that. And we've seen it over at Jeffco where people have signed a document like that. And the next thing, they move in and they say, well, I didn't know airplanes are going to fly over my house. So uh, this development, hopefully it's not built, but uh, if it were, uh, airplanes would be flying you know, 50 to 100 feet, even lower in some cases, over their house 400 times a day. And if you don't think that that's going to create huge uh, noise complaints and eventually and can I give you about a hundred degree or hundred percent uh, chance that uh, these people would sue the city and the airport just exactly like they're doing at Jeffco for a hundred million dollars and the taxpayers are going to end up paying that if that were to happen and it, it, it would be inevitable if these people if this built this uh, development is built and people are living there it's just not going to work so I hope that you guys and your letter that you wrote was excellent and I hope you'll continue to do whatever you can to uh, talk to the uh, city council into not passing this it's incredible to me that the planning, the planning department defied the, the uh, FAA the LOPA, the AOPA, common sense, and to, and uh, approve this in the first place. That's got all I have to say. Thank you. Would anyone else like to uh, comment or first public invited to be heard? Uh, good evening, Mark Arnold, 8243 Cattail. I apologize for being late. We tried all the entrances around the building. It took us a while to figure out. If, thanks for letting me in. Uh, apologies for that. Yeah, and, and my second apology will be, I, I, I hope I'm not repeating what's already been said, but having come in late, I just want to make a couple of points. Um, first, um, I did watch the zoning uh, meeting online, you know, the, the recording of that meeting. And what seemed evident to me was that um, the FAA responded and said that the plan was not compliant with their guidelines. And the zoning committee received or made access, had access to the advisory circular, which is, I think, about 190 pages. I read that. And it's very technical. It's aviation specific. And the zoning, and apparently the zoning committee under questioning acknowledged that they made changes to comply with the FAA guidance. But when asked whether they submitted it, resubmitted it to the FAA, uh, the zoning committee said, no, they didn't. And why is that? Because they said, quote, we knew it wouldn't be approved with the changes. And if you watch the recordings, you'll see that's exactly what transpired. So in addition to just generally objecting to this for all of the reasons I'm sure you've heard, um, at a minimum, the city would really be, I think, making a, a terrible mistake to go forward without engaging aviation-specific consultants 
who can actually reconcile the building plans, whether modified or not, with these technical guidelines. I think it would really be a mistake. Using Google Earth, which is not the be all to end all, my calculation suggests that if you draw a straight line from the final approach fix to the threshold of the runway, not the touchdown zone, but the threshold, which is acceptable, it would pass over the corner of that building by my calculations by 41 feet. So I think we're all, we've come to similar conclusions, but specifically this, it's crazy to depend, I think, on the zoning people who I'm sure are expert in their domain, but depending on them to reconcile to very technical standards, I think it would be a, a very terrible mistake. Um, and then once it gets built, you know, then we're stuck. So thank you all for volunteering your time, I believe, and, and helping us uh, arrive at good decisions for the airport and the community. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak at this time? Okay. Yeah, Phil, if you can grab Sean, that would be great. And I'll close the public invited to be heard then. Uh, we do have another one towards the end of the meeting, and we'll move on to our approval of the July 11th, 2024 minutes. Board members, does anyone have any revisions, changes, comments on those minutes? Hold on a second. Vice Chair Jordan. You can always count on me to read them when I get bored. Um, so on line seven, page one, it would have Chairperson Earl. It just says Chairperson, and normally we have his name. Um, they're all very, very minor. Um, on page three, line 37, uh, Ron Krenzel's remark, it's the busiest non-towered airport in the state. It just says no tower. Kind of the same, but it's referred to as non-towered. And then on page four, for myself, um, line 13, 14, and 15, I'm spelled uh, J-O-R-D-A-N. And then the last sentence, I was talking about the air show, and I don't know what the last sentence is saying. Um, it says, she stated inviting input for flyovers. That may have been what I said. Um, we aren't really, I, I don't, I'm not sure what that statement was, but it's fine, left the way it is. It's, that was last month, we moved on. But that was all, they were very minor. Okay, thank you, Vice Chair Jordan. Um, I'll note Sean McCoy is back with us um, since we're no longer talking about a sensitive topic. Board members, any other comments on approving July 11th, 2024 minutes? Would anyone like to uh, propose a motion to approve the minutes with uh, Melinda's amendments? I propose Mr. a motion to, for Vice Chairperson Jordan's uh, minutes. I'll second. Moved and seconded, thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes passed, thank you. Updates from the airport. Sorry, updates from the airport manager. Hello. Levi, let's go. All righty. I got a pretty good list for you guys today. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll make it a little brief. I'm not going to take you through the full conference, but I did go to the AAAE uh, General Aviation Conference. In fact, I just got back last night. Um, excellent little conference. Uh, so that's number one on my topic to talk about tonight. I'll give you some highlights from that real quick. Um, I guess I would mention that it, um, very beneficial, I felt like. That's the first year that I've certainly been to that conference or any record I can find of our airport attending that. Um, very focused, very good conference. Lots of great topics. Uh, unleaded fuel, of course. Um, FA land use policy and how that's been changing in the future. Community engagement. Um, noise issues, uh, lots of good focus on that, uh, lots of good data, um, which I will be digesting here. Uh, I was able to at least type up my notes from that conference um, today, but apart from that, uh, not, not a whole lot um, to get too deep into with the Airport Advisory Board quite yet, I don't think. Um, probably the biggest focuses of that conference would have been the unleaded fuel, the noise, and the community, community engagement aspects of it. All right. Um, any questions about my trip for the to the GA conference? Levi said one of the topics was noise. Can you kind of just dive into that one? Yeah, I can give you a little highlight on the noise stuff. Let me find my notes. Um, 
support. Community engagement. So that was mostly focused around the the community engagement seminar they did and stuff like that. Of course, the, the number one um, issue and the number one reason for the focus recently on improving community engagement is increased noise complaints around airport. Um, increased, uh, increased complaints about aviation fuel or uh, leaded aviation fuel, which it really kind of relates back to also noise, um, kind of in the same respect. Um, Number one kind of recommendation to take back from the conference was having a robust, good noise abatement program. Um, Longmont Airport is pretty good, uh, has a pretty good noise abatement program in my estimation. Uh, we have for quite a while, um, so we're not necessarily lacking on that. Um, moving forward, we'll definitely want to keep a, a close eye on that, making sure it's um, up to snuff, if you will, and updated periodically. Um, Getting things out into the public, or they talked about becoming more and more important as things progress forward. Um, having excellent website, um, making sure you're managing your data. You're the one. You're the airports that are out there in front of the community, kind of leading the call uh, with good good facts, good information, uh, good community engagement uh, was kind of the focus um, on that. Of course, from um, Colorado standpoint, House Bill 1235 was also talked about a little bit at the conference, uh, kind of talking about the requirements coming out of that um, uh, regarding the, uh, the, mandation, the mandating of airport noise abatement programs for airports. I will talk about that a little bit in my next topic. Uh, yeah, any questions specifically for that? Let's bleed into your next topic and we can... Kind of yeah. chime in on both those. We can do that. I'm just reviewing the rest of my notes there, make sure I wasn't skipping anything on that. Um, next topic, uh, College Department of Transportation had a uh, top five uh, GA airport meeting uh, regarding House Bill 1235, essentially is a information informational meeting uh, regarding that. I was unfortunately not able to make that as I was in the conference at Seattle. Coming back from that, Phil was able to cover though, which was really great. Um, he took some really good notes which I have here. Um, most of it not a huge surprise. Um, kind of the highlights of that. Um, House Bill 1235, which we of course talked about in the past, uh, focuses on the transition to unleaded aviation fuel uh, by the FAA's goal of 2030 um, and the mandation, mandating of noise abatement um, uh, programs for small airports, which we have established we already have. Um, Highlights from Phil's notes, and he could certainly speak on this too, I'm sure. Uh, but n no huge surprises, it looks like, comes out of that meeting. Um, CDOT has set aside specific dollars for the transition to unleaded fuel, so that will be a consideration moving forward when it comes to applying for grants, uh, managing projects at the airport. Um, they looks like they outlined a really great list of what that noise abatement program is going to require. I'm happy to say, looking at this short list, um, there, we already conducted all, perhaps the one shortcoming is uh, conducting meetings with flight schools and uh, meetings with pilots uh, on a regular basis, I assume. We will we'll check the, the exact uh, requirement of that. Uh, but apart from that, we have a published plan. Um, we have recommendations on uh, times of touch and goes. It's published on the web, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We seem to be meeting all of the state of Colorado's requirements on that. Oh, also, um, they will require a plan, um, a plan, not necessarily implementation, <clears throat> for the transition to unleaded um, avgas by January 1st, uh, 2026. Um, again, it's kind of good timing for us, if you will. Uh, we're at an airport with the low lead tanks uh, are kind of sunsetting. Anyway, so I've already begun the discussion with our engineers about, you know, moving forward with what would occur with a, a new fuel farm, what it's going to take to get new tanks in. So this is just uh, another little item that we can add into that discussion and essentially kind of loop it into the engineering that was already being conducted. Um, so again, no huge uh, obstacles, it appears, came out of that meeting. Any questions on House Bill 1235 meeting for myself or for Phil, I suppose? Bill, do you want to weigh in on that yeah. really quick? I just have one addition, board members, is that they did offer, CDOT did offer dollars to subsidize the or offset the cost of, of Avgas because 
it's more expensive so that they would offset those costs for a number of years. So it wouldn't be forever, but it would at least get people to be able to transition quicker, they thought. So they did offer that as well. And I guess Centennial Airport is doing that. So it was exciting news to hear that there's somebody already doing that. Uh, Phil, just I want to follow up on that. So my understanding is Centennial is doing it out of their own pocket right now. Um, is it sound like that there so CDOT is making funds available to do it more broadly? So they just signed an agreement with CDOT and that was covered at the conference. Okay. Yep. But up until that point, they were doing it out of their own pocket. Yep, they were. And so now there is yep. a broader grant so available. Mr. Ulane and Mike from Centennial actually kind of made the announcement at the conference. It's like, awesome. hey, we just signed the paperwork on this. So pilot program. Okay. Love it. Mr. Salamatin. Uh, <clears throat> I hope you had a good time at the conference. Um, was there anything about electrification of, of air uh, planes or engines or <coughs> motors or yep. anything? There was, um, and there will continue to be in, until it occurs. As, uh, there was actually the future of aviation sessions focused pretty heavily on that. Um, also, it kind of tied in with that. They were talking about the VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing aspects. Of the future of aviation. One of the things that was mentioned is that that's becoming kind of more and more accepted eventuality in airports, and they're starting to encourage people to make sure that they're visiting that area when it comes to master planning. Um, electric specific, um, the focus was on doing good planning. That's kind of seemed what the narrative was focused on. It was mentioned several times to make sure that prior to putting infrastructure into an airport, prior to getting dollars, kind of set aside that you know exactly what you're going to need at that airport was the focus point of that. Ha have we done any planning for vertical, like <coughs> drones type of, uh, you know, advanced drones, deliveries, you know? A very, commuting? very preliminary uh, discussions and stuff like that. Um, anything of that nature will probably be coming within the next master plan. It's going to, that's going to be a big lift. So that's probably something we'd want to, we'd want to loop into that. Got it. Thank you. Oh, uh, last thing. Did uh, HB 1235 deal with electrification at all? It mostly deals with uh, the noise issue and then unleaded gas, which you could kind of say deals with making things greener or moving towards uh, you know, more environmentally friendly thing. Not specifically with electrification to my knowledge. Got it. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Excuse me. How's that be hot? Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of counterintuitive. <laughs> it's turning on mine. Oh, Harrison, you picked a fun. Hey, check, check. Yeah, sorry, a lot of work just for a little comment, but there we go. Uh, HB 241235 uh, doesn't talk about anything electric. Okay. Um, there's a lot, of, lot in here about tax and ex, um, tax uh, incentives mm -hmm. and grants uh, if you comply with this. Um, and then it talks about the noise abatement uh, process. But honestly, the FAA hasn't, there's, there's unleaded gas that's being approved and, and uh, but it hasn't been widely used in aviation, it still doesn't work properly. So this is, this bill's getting ahead of itself and, uh, and it's gonna do more harm than good. It's not gonna, I mean, the, the, at the beginning of this, I'm looking at the act, it talks about all the health effects and how bad it is for, for people and sure lead is, could be very bad, but it fails to discuss the fact that in terms of impact on aviation, uh, that's a different topic altogether. So unfortunately, 
I think supporting this legislation is going to be negative or bad on our airports in the near term until we can get more advanced in technology. But I don't see anything in this bill that's going to help us out, and it's probably going to hurt us, quite frankly. So uh, put that on the record. Anybody else? Hey, thanks. Um, Mr. Meester, I saw you in there, and I apologize for having to step out for a second. No worries. Um, this is a question for Levi. Are, are we seeing an increase or a decrease or about the same in the number of noise complaints that KLMO is getting? Uh, most recent tally on that, and again, the information won't be complete or 100% comparable for year on year until like we can get a full year's data compared to last year. Uh, but we are over already our total complaints per household this year. It's right around the 60 households complaints at this point. Uh, last year, our total number was 47. Um, so we are a little bit above. The question becomes now, um, what will that continue to be throughout the year? So midsummer, um, most generally everyone or the majority of people who are going to complain have kind of already made their couple complaints. So as we move into fall, we'll see if we get new complaints or if we continue to get the same complaints from the same households. Uh, is there anything specific? Is it just pattern flight or is it? It seems to be pretty generic this year. Um, last year we seemed to have a, a big spike in uh, – Ultralight complaints. Um, this year, those are down um, mostly. Uh, we're just seeing a, when they come through, they're coming as as general noise complaints. Um, may perhaps a few more this year, uh, jumping specific, uh, but not really a spike in that either. It se they seems to be pretty generic noise complaint. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Vice Chair Jordan. Go ahead, Phil. Phil was going to say something. Okay. Just Go another ahead. thing. Sorry. About noise complaints, I think we, Levi and I have, have talked about this as well. And with the Boulder Airport being in the news lately and this airport being in the news quite a bit lately, I think that just also raises that awareness so people take on those issues as they see fit to complain. That's true. Vice Chair Jordan. I was going to ask um, Centennial, did they state how much fuel they're selling and pumping, what the volume looks like? You know, I don't. I, Phil might Either. have some more information on it than I do, but I we didn't talk about that at the conference, so I didn't get any figures on that. I know it's just beginning, though, so probably not a huge amount. I, I they did have an interesting statistic. They said that if all GA, GA aircraft in the United States um, were to start using the the existing supply of non-leaded gasoline right now, it would last for four hours. Um, so uh, there's not a whole lot of it out there yet. So at yesterday's meeting that Levi unfortunately was not able to attend, they and would have had much better information <laughs> uh, or would have heard the right things other than what I, I, I called myself the interloper at the meeting yesterday, but uh, eighteen to $25,000 per month for their subsidy program. Oh, that's good. Wow, that's significant. Board members, other questions? Well, I, I would then... Yeah, Phil. I have one more item from staff, and I think um, Councilmember McCoy may talk about this in his effort. Oh, that was going to be my next well. question here. So. Oh, okay. I just wanted to let Let's everybody know on the airport advisory board and in the public that city council passed on a, a motion on Tuesday that they do want to have further discussions about the airport and, and about the role of the airport uh, for the city and really show that support, I think, is really what that came down to for the airport. Um, and we can't do that obviously until we've heard until we've heard the issues on the August 27th issue that we've talked about earlier and then we go into budget season so the budget's really going to take over a lot of the council meetings so we're asking for folks to um, have some patience with this meeting but we think that we can um, we're looking we're eyeing a study session on October 29th at this point and you all have already been invited by city council to be part of that but I'll let uh, Councilmember McCoy talked more about that during his time. Thanks. Councilmember McCoy. Do you want me to add that in now? Please. Um, well, I, uh, uh, I think it would be really important that some of you have some strong feelings about this, so I uh, think that it's important that you come and, and uh, say something at that time. Uh, as I jokingly say to my students at high school, that my mind reading skills have deteriorated to the point where I actually have to ask questions. So uh, I'm, I really do want to see you there so that you're actually giving us the feedback. If you're um, 
if you have strong opinions or if you have uh, uh, deep knowledge, we want to know what that is, and we don't want to. Uh, that's why we, you know, encouraged you to uh, the supporting putting you on this board when you applied, and we we want to hear uh, your input because uh, I don't claim to be the expert on it. I I attended a, a conference uh, uh, in um, Atlanta in November last year and had a, uh, a roundtable discussion with the FAA at that time and uh, and so uh, asked them questions about drones and asked them about uh, electric uh, uh, planes and and other things like that so you know I, I am interested in that and if uh, uh, when I go to their November uh, conference again uh, for the National League of Cities I'll and they're there, which they usually are. I'll, I'll uh, carry your comments and uh, and questions forward to them. Thank you, Councilmember Quine. I I was really glad to see um, the Mayor Pro Tem make the motion to to have that joint session. Um, understand the budget pushes us to October, but looking forward to that conversation. Um, to the extent that you and the council are able to, you know, I know um, there was an invitation specifically to Levi to be present and be able to answer questions, but you know, I know that all of us or a representative of this board would be very happy to be actively participating in that conversation and the back and forth as well to the extent that we're able to. So thank you. All Other right. updates? Topics? I do have a few more update items. Go for it. Um, quick stuff. Um, uh, wildlife fence project uh, moving forward last time I believe it was out for bid uh, we did get those bids in we got some surprisingly good bids um, a couple of them half of the the cost that we thought it might be which was excellent um, so moving forward with one of those selected um, individuals um, paperwork's being drawn up now I've already got a council item for potentially getting that approved for the FAA funds for that uh, fire inspections continuing to move forward um, that the last official uh, sign up weekend will be this weekend, Friday and Saturday. Uh, for that, right now, we're, it's look like we're sitting at about half of the folks on the airport voluntarily signed up uh, for fire inspections, which you know isn't amazing, um, but not without outside of the realm of you know kind of what the expectation was. So, next step on that will be um, coordinating with the fire department to see how they want to proceed with making sure we get their inspections completed. Um, let's see. Oh, um, one other item, working with the engineers and with the city procurement department. Um, I know in previous airport advisory board meetings, we've talked about the projects coming up on the airfield, um, the wildlife fence and also pavement rehab. A pavement rehab project, we've already, already got the grant secured for, and so we've been having conversations with the engineers. Uh, they've got enough of the design done. They're th thinking about pushing that up and potentially getting it done at the end of this year instead of next year. Uh, so that's currently being kind of uh, vetted out, if you will, and see if we can move forward that direction. So yay, ahead of schedule on something, right? Mr. Shook. Um, <coughs> Levi, um, mm -hmm. I've been talking to some of the tenants, pilots, the ground hogs or whatever they're called, mm -hmm. uh, have started to come back. Yep. And I know you've had people out there. What's, what's the scenario? I mean, and we were talking that a bit about that last year too. Um, Let's see how, where did I leave that off at? So what we did, what we started out doing this year was in order to try to stay, stay ahead of it, um, before we kind of tried to assess and then schedule treatments as needed. So this year we actually got the city on a, a, a treatment schedule. So once a month the public work guys come out, flag of the holes, once a month the city comes out and treats. Even at that, um, this prairie dog uh, year has been particularly bad. Um, we, we just went essentially from 0% prairie dog population to, you know, hundreds overnight. Now, it's still a fraction of what it was three years ago, um, but it is significantly more than it was. Um, the next, the, actually, the, they were just flagged this Wednesday. The next treatment is tomorrow. Um, at that point, I'm looking to touch base with uh, Scott, the head of the crew out there. I've asked him if he would do a meeting with me to get his opinion on uh, what needs to be done in the future. Um, whether the city 
if we as a city can handle it ourselves or whether we need to look at and getting another uh, private contractor to come in and do an airport wide treatment. What about the rabbit population? The rabbit population has been talked about a couple times too. Um, from an FAA standpoint, at least we're, we don't seem to be uh, facing violations uh, and threats uh, from that. Um, most of the kind of wildlife issues they've brought up are pretty focused on the prey dog holes. Um, the rabbit issue itself so far seems to be mostly an annoyance and not as much of a concern, but that's something else that I've been talking a little bit about Scott with. Um, but so far, no solutions on that. Well, I drive up to my hangar, there's 20 rabbits mm -hmm. or more. And as soon as you open the door and turn your head, they're getting in your hangar. And, you know, it is annoying and, you know. <laughs> Some carrots in there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I'd like to at least keep talking about that yeah. because you know they're breeding very quickly. Yeah, it's 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 a bad rabbit year, and they they mentioned that too that it's a it's a bad. They said it was a bad prey dog year, and it's a terrible rabbit year for some reason. Um, oh, I guess this is a good time to give an update, too. It's also a terrible mouse year. I don't know what's going on this year. Um, but I've doubled um, the treatment schedule on all of the airport gates. Um, we were having issues with uh, the mice just getting in and eating the wiring in the gates. So I'm essentially treating every little gate box essentially like a building. Um, so every gate box has its own uh, bait station in it with mice, mouse catching apparatuses to make sure that we're mitigating uh, any wiring damage as much as possible. What, um, what's been going on with the ASOS? Uh, earlier this year, the ASOS was having uh, power supply issues. Um, so the board was going in and out and in and out and in and out. Um, since we had it worked on a few weeks back, I haven't heard any specific complaints from tenants. Yeah. It's yeah. It was yeah. About two weeks ago that, yeah, yeah it's, but it was out for two or three weeks. It was. It kind of went off and on. So that was kind of a a, a puckery call. Um, so it was. It was. <laughs> I'll I'll quantify that statement. Um, <laughs> um, it was working, um, but the uh, power unit was supplying way too much power for the unit. So we kind of had to make the call of, of taking the chance of just kind of leaving it on and hoping the whole box doesn't burn down or t <laughs> or turning it off and making sure we save the AWOS but have suffer without AWOS for a while. So that's kind of the call I made. Um, we got lucky in the respect that DTP, the company that does repairs on that, actually had a power supply in their stock. They just had to make the time to come out and see us. So they did that repair. They uh, got everything back, um, got the NOTAMs off, and it should be operating normally. If you guys hear otherwise, let me know. Yeah. Airport, is that all right if I ask about airport related? Okay. Yeah. Mr. Great. Menza. All right. Hey, quickly on gate four uh, drama. Uh, mm -hmm. I see that thing. That's the one I used to go to my hangar. It looks like it's up a lot. Is that uh, part of the mouse issue or wiring issues? Or I know it from a safety perspective, we want our airplanes protected and we don't want to have a ground mishap from somebody who's not supposed to be on the airport. So. Yeah, I can, I can give an update on that one. Gate four has been the bane of every airport manager's existence essentially since the record that i can tell um over my tenure here i've essentially had every part in it replaced um including the boards including the safety switches and everything um and the mystery remains on what's going on so last year the thought process was it must be a power supply issue which is tricking its sensitive and I'll, I'll try not to get too deep into the details there tricking its kind of sensitive board workings and breakers and turning it off and on um i also recently actually just a week also touched base with public works and their electric team and we're kind of going down another uh trail to see if perhaps it's heat related on one of the components or something of that respect because it mostly seems to happen on hot days you can make the argument that okay it could be power related on hot days because we're having brownouts or electric suppliers or it could be heat related so we're just started tracing down the new thought process that it could be heat related but again we've replaced every component in the gate so it's the kind of question becomes if we replaced every component 
was attracted out to. So it's, you know, long story short, it's a phantom electric issue that we're continuing to, on a weekly basis, try to track down. All right. Yeah, because it's up a lot. And yep. I just, uh, and that one from a security perspective, yep. yep. If it's worth cutting our losses and figuring out if there's another solution, another gate type. And that's been talked there. about, too. It's also been talked about just transitioning it back to a slider gate. Um, then we get into issues with spacing and actually getting it to fit there. And then we get in issues with just the, the budget money that it would take. So hopefully we can get it solved otherwise. Yep. We have one topic from me. Um, drainage study. Yes. We talked last time around. Um, we It was supposed to be done mm -hmm. about now or in the last couple of weeks. Um, so very curious for the outcome of that and then how quickly we can move from that to solving issues and issuing RFPs for development. Yep. I'm still waiting on kind of the final meeting for that one. To my understanding, it is now pretty much wrapped up. The last meeting uh, was our water folks, unfortunately, kind of had to cancel. Uh, so now we're just kind of waiting to get it back on their schedule so we can sit down with all the engineers and start moving forward with that. Uh, preliminary discussions with the engineers uh, from IRS, those folks that are, that are doing that study, said that they're going to probably recommend um, a, a retention pond expansion uh, prior to uh, prior to any building going on inside the airport, but of course I'll have to wait for the report for specific details and promises. Okay, I'm very eager to hear about that. I am um, too. <laughs> you know, I, we've talked about this, you and yes. I, before that you know, getting that drainage improvement yeah. in place, whatever that looks like, is the key to expanding our development. It is. Um, so it's, I, you know, really want us to be clued in on that because I think there's probably going to be a funding ask. This is just my assumption um, to get that done um, and would like to be able to you know have that in front of council, yeah. um, particularly in light of other discussions about the development on the airport and other things coming. And it is, as you mentioned, one of the final things we've got for the, we've got uh, electric conduit run past there now. We've got the new sewer in. We've got water relatively accessible. Kind of the drainage on that side of the airport is kind of the last big engineering ticket item, if you will when it comes to uh, future development on the airport. Got it. Thank you. Board members, any other questions on updates from the airport manager? Okay. Leo, do you have any information items that we haven't covered? I think that was it. Okay. Yep. Um, I would like to kind of debrief um, a couple topics related to development. So Councilmember McCoy, would, it, would you mind stepping out for a couple minutes? I'm sorry to ask you to do that, but thank you. Excuse me. Um, while he's stepping out, I'll give the disclaimer that you know I'm I'm going to speak as a citizen. Um, I've had a few discussions and just want to be able to talk about them. Um, we, as the board, are not going to take further action tonight. We can't. Um, so I'll just kind of leave that there for right now. And Phil, tell me if I'm going to cross a line here. Um, <laughs> What yeah, I, I, think, I think you have to be really careful because you are sitting in the chair seat at this point. You are not acting necessarily as a citizen at this point. So I would just really hesitate to have you say anything from that chair about specific development. Anything at all? All right. I can do this. Okay. Um, as you know, the, the Airport Advisory Board wrote a letter to the City Council related to development. Um, because this is a quasi-judicial topic, no city council member is allowed to talk back to us about that. So I have not had any discussions with city council members. However, I have had conversations with the city manager and the assistant city manager about the airport specifically, um, development broadly, and meetings that they've had with the FAA. I would say that the city manager and the assistant city manager understand the concerns that we have raised. Um, I think they understand very clearly the concerns that the FAA has raised about development at the airport. Um, they, however, are also bound by a quasi-judicial and can't advocate to city council outside of the public hearing. Um, that's a frustrating position for all of us to be in, because I would really like to go have those discussions, as I know all of you would. Um, so I can't, you know, I, the, kind of walking up to that line, but I would just say the city city staff is well aware of our concerns and i'll leave it there um i also had a discussion <coughs> with uh, the developer yesterday um, a lunch meeting as a citizen not as an advisory board member um 
and he's well aware of the concerns there. And I, you know, I don't want to go too much into detail other than to say um, the plans that are submitted in front of the council are different than the original plans to incorporate feedback from the FAA. Um, I recognize that there's many perspectives on whether that's enough or not. Um, we certainly have had a perspective on that in the past and taken action on that. Um, but um, just wanted to kind of throw that out there that you know it was a productive discussion at least to kind of hear a perspective, ask some questions, be able to do that. Um, so I, I'm really grateful for that and grateful for the city manager on that. Um, I think that's probably about all I am allowed to say, but I will uh, pass it on to Mr. Salamatine. So I am also speaking as a individual, and uh, I have spoken to members of the Division of Housing and the Department of Local Affairs. They, I've spoken to the attorneys there. They are aware of the potential risks associated with its development, and um, they. I don't believe they will be support from uh, Department of Local Affairs or Division of Housing for this development. Thank you. I'm an, uh, I'm frustrated we can't say much more than that, but I appreciate it. Mr. Shook. I, I don't know if I could say this, but uh, <laughs> so the Modern West 1 was already approved. Can I talk about that? Okay. Yeah. So where was the airport board in 2021 about Modern West 1. Modern West 1 is at least as bad as Modern West 2. So, I mean, there could be, I, I don't know. It's, it's very frustrating. Yes, understood. Phil Greenwald again, transportation planning manager and have planning in my title, so I guess I need to take on that responsibility for planners everywhere. Um, but Modern West 1 went through all the same gyrations and everything that Modern West 2 is going through. Modern West 1 went to the FAA, so did Modern West 2, and both got initial approval from the FAA as far as height and the glide slope piece. Nothing about land use, so that was never mentioned in the first round for either one of them. And so that's, that's how Modern West 1 got through is because there wasn't all the issues dealing with our neighbors to the south, and I mean Rocky Mountain uh, Metropolitan Airport, and their, their lawsuits at that time. So I hate to say it this way, but Modern West 1 flew under the radar. And so um, they made it through. They got passed. They weren't doing the same things that Modern West 2 is trying to do with changing some components of their concept plan. And you didn't hear about it. Again, it's been mentioned before that uh, the notification area doesn't include the airport for that. And that is bad because the pilots have a lot of say in that. But um, it's good because it says that it's far away from the, far away from the airport. So it was too far away to, be, to, notifi to notify the, the airport and get people um, understanding what was going on in that location. But this all goes back to, and then there's been some comments made about Envision Longmont, but Envision Longmont was something that went out to the FAA as well. It went to all the public. It was vetted by every um, advisory board. It was vetted by every, it was, vetted, it was approved by the city council. So there was lots of opportunities for public hearing on that. And it included a residential component close to the airport. And so all of those things being said, Nobody came up and never gave us the, gave our planners the yellow flag or the red flag to talk about how important it was for this growth not to happen that close to the airport. So had we heard that, had the planners heard that, we'd have a whole different conversation right now. But nobody, nobody brought this up and it didn't come up until, um, like, like you said, one person saw a sign and said, I'm going to come to that Planning and Zoning Commission, which really turned out to be a good thing. Let's be honest. I mean, for us and for for the pilots. So, um, I'll just leave it at that. I don't want to talk too much more about yeah, yeah, anything, but uh, just to say that Modern West One, uh, this guy over here, Levi, was continually in the planners' ear about how important it was not to have residential growth near the airport, 
and he got push pushed back at the time saying it's in the comprehensive plan and so it's allowed and so um he was kind of a lone voice against the development uh for the city so and it, it's also important to point out that it, as you mentioned in, in 2021 that it was kind of a tumultuous time for the airport. Unfortunately, Mr. Slater passed away that time. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff Coleman came in and he kind of hit the ground running. So there was a there was a large point of time there where there wasn't someone who was established at the airport and that kind of added a little bit, I think, to what Phil mentioned of it flying under the radar. Yeah, yeah. I figured that, but. Yeah. Um, Mr. Salamatian, you're next, then Mr. Menza. So I, I'm not sure whether we can do this, but um, you know, on this topic, uh, a person uh, from the public came and asked us, uh, suggested that we do a uh, suggestion to the zoning, planning and zoning commission that the airport is notified whenever there's a development or anything that could impact the airport or the airport's influence zone. Um, I think that that would be a prudent thing for us to, to do just so that you know, if anything else happens, which I'm sure development is always going to happen in Longmont, that we are aware of it and uh, it doesn't require someone to attend a meeting by chance. Mr. Talmadge, you know, I'd, I'd like to have that conversation. I'd like Councilmember McCoy to be in on that conversation too. Mr. Menza, did you want to talk about something that would be inappropriate for him to be here for? No, I'm mean, actually... Um... Actually, it'd probably be good if he was here. Okay. Because I would like to, yeah. You know. Okay. No. And I, just general question for you all: the um, you guys all read the FAA letter to the city from 2023. Is that in response to Modern West Two or Modern West One, or just any development on that particular area? Do you guys understand that letter? My if I recall correctly, it specifically mentions Modern West Two. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Because yeah. um, from some of our aviators here in the room, that one is also going to propose uh, or is going to be an issue for safe flying aircraft. And, um, you know, I, I'll wait till Mr. McCoy gets in here, but um, we're kind of at a crossroads. You know, aviation is, is literally my life. That's what I do. That's what I, I pay the bills with, and that's what I do for fun. And maybe I'm an aviation junkie, but got professional degrees in it and I've done it professionally and for fun forever and uh, and I'm really worried about what's happening all over the front range here so the alligator and you know in the you know the in the room here is that aviation's under attack uh, and you know BJC and then they're literally trying to shut down Boulder which has a lot of history some of the best soaring in this part of the country there's so many good aspects to aviation that far outweigh the bad there's ways to mitigate noise there's ways to do things that are more in tune with the community but the good outweighs the bad and i guess what i see here in longmont is i don't i i hear a lot of aware people are aware people aware you know and this is why i wanted you back in the room sir you know it's one of those things we're talking about awareness but i want to know if there's a commitment from the city council and from the mayor to protect this airport because we're all talking about growth. We all have great ideas. Our, our other aviator friends and airport community members always talk about what we can do, what we should do to develop and foster a better relationship. But let's, let's make it very clear. If we lose, if we violate the FAA's rules in terms of land use and, and ability to properly fly aircraft in and out of that corridor that they've stipulated, then we're going to lose funding. And if you lose funding, the airport's gone. It's gone. So we're at a crossroads. We need a commitment from the city about protecting this airport. And that, unfortunately, is going to mean that the people with the big bucks with development are going to have to be a little bit more creative about where they put their, uh, their development to address those housing issues. If we either want to protect the airport and grow it, or we're going to close it. And you know which side of the fence I'm on. I'm on the fence with the folks out here in the room. Uh, so I want you guys to consider that going forward. And uh, we've got great leadership here. The letter put together was spot on. We're going to keep doing that for the community. Um, but we're going to need a lot more help 
to address this issue. And I, like you said, I don't know how we got there from here from 2021, but we've got to put some boots on the ground and see what we can do to convince the city council and the, the mayor that this is a good thing. All right, I'm done. Thank you, Mr. Menza. I, I'm optimistic that October session and conversation is a really good time to have that, that broader conversation. Um, obviously there's issues between now and then that we shall not speak about, but um, I'm, I'm looking forward to that as a kind of broader advocacy session and get their commitment to us. Um, I'm gonna go back to Mr. Salamatine, the point you raised based on the, the comments um, that we heard that there was a request to, I honestly don't know kind of the logistics of how we do this, but to advocate that the council considers um, notifying the airport manager, airport users of development in a broader radius around the airport um, so that we are able to provide feedback up front. I don't know if that's something that's appropriate. And Councilmember Coy, if you have a perspective here, if it's appropriate for us to ask directly to the council as the advisory board or kind of raise it through a different channel and support it, or I, I don't quite know the, the pathway to do that. Well, I don't claim to know every uh, little nuance of what's um, uh, what's the best uh, strategy or approach. Uh, I would probably say that the, from my per personal perspective, that uh, um, uh, I think going through Levi is probably the most uh, logical um, approach. Uh, and um, given your recommendations, uh, you know, when I was uh, the liaison in the uh, in two th uh, around two thousand seven to two thousand eleven for this uh, advisory board, um, you know, I think that was the standard practice to 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 voice your concerns uh, for a particular development or some sort of thing like that to the airport manager, and then have the airport manager um, get with uh, our legal team our transportation uh, advisors and, and leadership and uh, with our uh, city manager to uh, uh, try to figure out the best course of how to approach council on these issues and um, a a as well as adhering to the issues around uh, uh, any sort of grants and uh, any sort of uh, other uh, requirements that the city has in regards to um uh dealing with the FAA so i know that's a little bit of a roundabout way of answering that but i i just think probably the best way is to go through the conduit of uh, uh the airport manager and then uh, if there if there comes a time where we need to go in the the opposite direction uh your other suggestion uh then that's that's something uh, we can explore too. It's uh, easy enough for me. Um, as so far, the the one big item that's come up has been Modern West. In my tenure here, has been Modern West too, and that came to the, the board here. So I can certainly convey information that way. Um, as long as I continue to get good information, you know, anything that's being in the airport influence zone conveyed to me, then I can then convey that to the board, of course. And I appreciate that, and thank you, Councilmember McCoy. Um, Levi, are, do you get proactive notification about developments in the airport advisor in the airport influence zone? I, I, I can't speak to if I exactly gotten everything in the in airport influence zone. We could certainly double check, make sure that that is the case. I did get the the one for Modern West Two officially to my my table if you will so i was asked directly for input on that and then provide it um i do also i just just point of information do periodically get uh, communications from boulder county um, on development around the airport too okay I, what i would ask and i'm cognizant of the fact that we as a board and that's why i'm not going to call for a motion can't direct you to do anything but I would ask that maybe you go back and have conversations with the city, um, you know, other city staff, and make sure that there is a, a formal policy that make sure you have that. And if there is not, um, then, you know, e either have the conversations to do that and or report it back to us and we can um, make a request to the city staff for that as well. Um, recognizing I can't direct you to do that, but I'm pretty sure I speak for the board that we would appreciate that information. Okay. 
Vice Chair Jordan. It seems um, easy to say the airport influence zone for notifications, although that's a very large footprint. So mm -hmm. would it be possible to establish what our what our footage radius is? That and that would be that kind of the conversation to have with yeah. the planning department. So is it, yeah. it's 1,000 feet, 5,000, yeah. 10,000, what are we? Mm -hmm. And then ask for that for a radius around. And then they, um, we were at the city council meeting and they discussed the paddle that they were mm -hmm. preserving at each end. And I can't, I, I'm still wondering where that fits into this. I believe it, it won't affect this because it's after the fact. The, it, oh, the proposed zoning yeah, changes, you with mean? with the paddle, yeah. Um, yeah that, okay. Oh, that's too, that's too well, close to. Can we just talk yeah. about that in that zone in general? Because it did come up in a city council meeting is not directly related to any proposed development. Um, and the council had asked questions with the request that it come back to council. Can we address it from that perspective? Okay. Okay. All right, no, not specifically. So specifically, those paddles, if you will, were taken directly from the FAA's uh, guidance on uh, kind of the recommended uh, zoning for around an airport. So those were, uh, to the planning department's credit, um, when they kind of set out their recommendations, they pretty much copied the advisory circular that the FAA had out there. That's what they did. Do, do we know when that might go back to council um, to that try I, to be considered? Because I think that would know. be, yeah. you know, certainly something that we'd, you know, we, we've discussed supporting that. We have not taken action to support that or recommend the council approve it, but yeah. I think that would be important for us to do so, regardless of any specific development. Uh, that I don't know, and I don't think Phil has any additional information on that, too, but I would I certainly hope that with, with all the additional um, attention being given to the airport, that's probably something that's going to be pretty high up there on, on that question list. I would say that the intent was that, that those, those paddle pieces, and, the, and we had the original conversation with the city council, but the idea was that it would come through the airport advisory board as it moved its way to an official piece of, of city code, and that has not happened yet. With all the all the action that's been happening lately, um, that's all been kind of pushed aside as we kind of deal with other things. So, but it was the intent that we come to this board with that um, outline and the circular that was the FAA circular, so you could marry those two pieces together. And I know um, yeah. there's some comments made too about. Um, you know, a lot of information in that circular, and you know, good planners put that together and and different things. We did use our GIS department to really follow the the exact outlines when we presented to council and and showed them what our thoughts were as far as that went. And so, it uh, we do want to make that public record and put it out there as far as something that we would uh, have this board uh, make a recommendation to city council on. And I would say, again, uh, props to the city planning department. They took a very textural, very boring, very dry FAA advisory circular and made a beautiful drawing in 3D airspace of what it would look like, and it, it looked really nice. Yeah, I, I, would, I, I appreciate the work that's been done on that. I'd really like to see that kind of continue and go forward because I think it would, you know, I, I think it would be valuable for the long-term land use around the airport, um, recognizing it doesn't impact anything that's pending not going to go there but you know just from a long-term perspective it does you know increase the recognition of the airport's presence the impact it has um and it had updated navigation easement language which i think is also really important the one thing that i'll just add and i'm kind of worried here because i might i might be crossing that line now but in the the faa did not say that that was the line that they would agree to. Understood. Understood that the so, FA has not given a straight answer. So another reason why we wouldn't, why we haven't brought this forward to you or the city council at this time, because we don't have clear direction. Mr. Menza. Are you guys working with the FA on these issues actively? Okay. They're nodding yes. Okay. Sorry, want to make that clear for anyone who's listening and couldn't see that. All right, any other, <laughs> anyone else on um, information items? Um, we have no action items tonight, so I'll kind of, anything else from the board before we go to our final public invited to be heard? 
Do you want to do it now or do you want to wait till the end? Um, oh, we could do it in the comments. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, let's open up our final public invited to be heard then. Wrong button. <laughs> I don't know. Can I, are you, you are welcome to comment about anything you'd like to. Are you going to comment about any pending development just so we can advise Councilmember McCoy to leave or not leave? Uh, no, I, I was, yeah, no, I'm not, not. Okay. I'm just make that statement just that. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, Councilmember McCoy for that. I, you know, I, I think if, if anyone is going to come up, you are welcome to talk about any topic you'd like to. However, to perverse, preserve the quasi-judicial, if you're going to, can we just up front and we'll ask Councilmember McCoy to step out and apologize for the inconvenience. This is a huge pain for all of us, but thank you for helping us follow the rules. It is it is difficult. And I I think it's, uh, we've generally been talking about some things. And I, I was just going to a little clarity and things have been said. And just uh, uh, the one issue I was uh, one talked about the uh, Notification the thousand foot, which is not enough, but uh, to be clear, uh, my suggestion was, and I heard the the chain of command that sounded good, but the I uh, do not uh, not at all advising that we have a uh, an intention and goodwill to uh, notify the appropriate people. It's I was suggesting a. A development code change the development code now already allows the planning director to notify anybody that might be impacted and so that we don't want we need something stronger in this case it's for everybody's good the cities the FAA the public everybody so that's what I was suggesting and how you go through that yeah, I'm no expert at that, but it eventually it's got to get to the council to um, move to have a development code change with these words. So uh, I think everybody would be better off. Uh, and then the other thing that's been mentioned quite a bit was this advisory circular. And there's, I, I don't find it that complex. It, I do also agree that the FAA is never going to say this development meets our standards because there's no exact standard, but it's a very good document. And basically, it's saying the more people you put in line with this runway, the more consequential an accident is going to be. And so that gives you enough. And the other thing that uh, is in there that's it's definitely been talked about and everybody wants to make do uh, well here is that the actual air sport sponsor is the one that has some uh, responsibilities and in this case the sponsor is the city and the city not only is responsible for doing what they can with the airport they are responsible for the zoning. And so it's the best situation to have in that regard if everybody is actually involved with the advisory circular. It's a good document. It doesn't tie anybody's hands completely. It's not regulatory. But it does say these are the good ideas. And if you're the sponsor of the airport and you're in control of the land use, you can actually make it happen and reduce the uh, li the liability and the accidents and noise and everything. So thank you. Thank you. Come on up. I'll ask the same question for Councilmember McCoy's sake. I'm going to be clean. I okay. promise. <laughs> I appreciate M Member McCoy being here. And I'm sorry, can you start name and address? Yes, and then I'll start I, I, I will. Uh, hi, I'm Dan Barry. I live in 930 Champion Circle, Longmont, Colorado, and I am an airplane addict. My ancestors were airplane addicts after they served in World War II. Uh, so I care deeply about this airport as well, so I appreciate Member Menz's comments, and especially at Gate 4, I never roll my window down very often. Um, and I appreciate Member Shook's comments about the rabbits. My biggest concern is the dead rabbits and the health hazard behind my hangar. Uh, it's an unpleasant smell back there. And it's not just from Dwayne's cigars, it's from the dead rabbits. Uh, being a, uh, 
an airplane addict, aviation addict. I actually enjoy airplane noise. That's why I live underneath the pattern of 1-1 at Longmont. However, being in your seats when I did serve on the airport board, I learned quickly that not everybody likes airplane noise. Uh, I dealt with that over and over again. So here's my view of it is, Levi said we have a noise abatement plan. We do, it's a good one. Um, it meets all the requirements. However, what I notice at this airport, and I fly weekly, is that the implementation is lacking severely. And the implementation to me is working with our visitors that come to this airport, the other flight schools, I don't know what it takes to educate, to, to notify. Uh, the noise and abatement plan is there, the pictures are there, uh, but they still prefer to do a three mile final or two mile or even a one mile final, which you don't need to do uh, to establish a, uh, a, a, a slope, a, a stabilized approach. Um, so long, I, that's what I think implementation, implementation is missing. And so when we talk about updating the plan, let's also consider updating the strategies and tactics to implement that plan so that we can actually have a friendlier airport. It's become less friendly in this pattern, I'll guarantee you. And the frustration has gone up. I've seen our local Phenom jet fly closer patterns than the 172s from Metro. Um, the, we talked about the airport influence zone. Uh, I believe from, I don't know when we did the master plan back in odd eight, it actually defines the airport influence zone. So there's already a picture, a document. I hope you refer to that. Just as a friendly reminder. And also a friendly reminder is, um, member Menza mentioned boots on the ground. We have our airport expo coming up in September. This is a huge opportunity, as it always has been, for city council to please visit that, see, see the crowd. We had 5,000 people in 2018. Uh, we had 4,000 in 2016. And Bob blew the windows out of the city with the jets. But uh, So maybe there's an opportunity to invite city council. I'm sure you have. Make them feel special, a special notification or recognition like we did in the past. Uh, what else do I have here? I think, oh, I want to thank you for serving on this board. I know how challenging it can be. Um, I was on it back when the, the skydivers were doing, going through the lawsuits. That was extremely entertaining. I don't think your entertainment factor is a whole lot less. So thanks for doing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to uh, speak here? Um, so I think this is going to violate the quasi-judicial, so thank you. Thank you for the heads up. Yeah. Apologies, Councilmember McCoy. We'll thank have you, you back in much. a second. Nothing personal. Uh, Mark Arnold, 8243 Cattail Drive. Um, there's probably more senior pilots here, but this marks my 50th year of flying. Um, in ATP, I've based uh, aircraft at Longmont for 25 years, uh, jet, uh, turboprops and uh, gliders. Um, so I'm an avid user and a uh, hangar owner. Um, so I carefully went through and scrubbed the presentation by the, the zoning uh, commission when they approved uh, this latest proposal. And I just want to clarify a few things, um, which maybe you already know, but they struck me as I was watching the, the, the presentation. First of all, there seemed to be a very strong, I guess, desire on the part of the zoning department to point out that the advisory circulars were not mandatory. Um, but I'd like to make sure the record shows that the runway protection zone, the RPZ, and also the civil airport obstacle clearance criteria, those are legal requirements. And those are called out in 14 CFR 77. And so I spent you know, some time going down the rabbit hole of trying to figure out you know, this interface between airports and the community. And that's not, that's not optional. So there is actual legal basis for protecting the RPZ. A uh, few other observations I wanna make sure everyone is aware of is that 
<clears throat> Mr. Sweeney from uh, the FISDO, his June 13th uh, land use incompatibility letter explicitly stated that the FAA would feel that that this development would would be deemed a prod, would would be deemed a violation of the FAA's land use guidelines uh, as required by the grant assurance number 21. So there is a specific requirement historically requiring uh, the airport sponsor to um, to quote take appropriate action to restrict land use uh, in order to protect uh, the use of the airport. So based on that one two-hour uh, session, I, I wanted just to draw your attention to a few direct quotes that came out of that in case in any way that got missed. One, how, how did the Zoning Commission assess Longmont's legal exposure from the direct threat from the FAA? The only advice given during that session and maybe there were other meetings, but I'm basing this on, on that approval session, was they relied on the advice of Mr. Morgan, who was the applicant's lawyer, uh, a non-pilot. So that seems like a very odd source to be getting legal, uh, uh, legal advice. Ms. Hewitt, under questioning, asked, well, how did they think that the revised plan would satisfy the FAA requirements. And her answer was that she, quote, guessed about what would comply with the FAA guidance. That's a direct quote. Um, she was asked, why weren't the proposed changes submitted back to the FAA for approval? Quote, we did not go back to Mr. Sweeney because we didn't think we would get a different response. And that's a direct quote from, from the video of that meeting. So I just wanna point out that this is a very high risk bet that the city is taking, that they're not going to lose grants from the FAA in support of the airport. And they're basing, if, if they go forward as currently stated, they're going forward on that, uh, making that bet based on the advice of non-aviation resources, which I think is, is extremely risky. And from my point of view, it seems like a case of the blind leading the blind uh, with respect to compliance with FAA requirements. So I just wanna make those comments about what to me seems like an, an unreasonable legal risk that the city is taking on to combat the FAA without the benefit of, of legitimate aviation consulting support for that decision. So it seems like a very high risk move. So thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak at our final public invited we heard tonight? I'll ask the same question about for Mr. McCoy's sake if he's safe to be in here or not. Uh, well, I'm, I'm just <clears throat> probably let's not take the risk. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. McCoy. We'll call you back. So my name's Joe Willis. I am not an aviation addict. I'm here just. I'm kind of concerned because you guys are saying future Longmont. How is this future Longmont? You're taking a risk of losing grant money. You're with the not specifically this development, but future developments. How is that helping you guys? Maybe tax base, but what's the tax base versus a grant, right? That's forever. That's going to be there all the time. Um, why? Why would you? want more complaints you know that's another thing you need that the council needs to you need to ask the council why would you want that um to me i wouldn't want it it's more law enforcement or whoever that's going to be dealing with it you're going to you want to future your yourself to be better by um obviously being Consider, consider it for
for the citizens and by building any development within that path is not considerate to you guys, to the city of Longmont, or the people that are gonna be living there. So just a couple things I wanted to say that I, I just see that I don't understand. Thank you. So the more questions I'd like to have asked and, and, and answered too. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak at our final public invited to be heard? I'm not seeing anyone, so go in once, go in twice. Sold. All right, we'll close the final public invited to be heard and we will move on to board council and or staff comments and welcome back, Councilor McCoy. Um, I'll start with board comments. Vice Chair Jordan, I know you have one. I do. I've Would anyone else like to go first here? And I'm sorry, Mr. Shook, I didn't <laughs> see you in there. Go ahead. Is there a way to install a message on the AWOS about noise procedures? I've been to other airports and they at least uh, say something, you know, please um, pay attention to noise abatement rules here. There's that could be fleshed out and kind of with this board and kind of looking at the pluses and minuses. Of it. That's something that's kind of on my radar for something potentially to do. Uh, something else, kind of in that same vein, that's becoming more and more accepted is uh, chart supplements are starting to. You'll see more and more noise abatement procedures actually being published in those also. So there's there's several things to kind of think about when it comes to that. Yep. Mr. Salamatin. I would just like to thank everyone who came tonight and who spoke. Uh, this is very important for you all to uh, participate in because without you, we have less um, reason to go to council and uh, advocate. So by you coming here and showing up, it really helps our case to uh, bring to council. So thank you all for your participation. I'll second that. I'm really glad that so many people have been able to comment in this meeting, the last meeting, um, the emails that I've gotten, communication that I know has gone to city council about various topics. Um, and I would just encourage folks, as you would like to, to please go to the meeting, particularly August 27th, and make your comments there so that they're represented uh, again. Other board comments? Vice Chair Jordan. Thank you. We have an air show coming up. Um, some of you are aware of that. I think all of you probably are. So September 14th at our airport, 7 a.m. starts with an EAA pancake breakfast. Um, we start the air show portion about 11. They, they, we've got a nice lineup. We've got um, local performers, paid performers, uh, military branches sending in uh, aircraft and it is all still underway. We're still pushing uh, DD 2535s and lining stuff up. So um, just now we just need not the low ceilings that we had today. And September 14th, typically, other than the year of the flood, um, has been a good time uh, for aviation and it should be a beautiful day. The show goes until, f well, the event goes until five. The show is expected 11 to 1.30, I believe is our window. And uh, we open with the exhibitors. We have an interesting variety of exhibitors and then a heavy focus on education. Um, so the St. Brain Valley School District's Innovation Center is our anchor in the edge zone. And then we've got um, ATC, um, Spartan, uh, Metro State, uh, including Dagmar Crest will be flying. Um, we've got the Air Force coming in with gliders. We've got um, the C-130s. Uh, we've got request in with Colorado Guard to get it really loud. We've got um, the various organizations, aviation organizations, that all kind of be clustered around the education zone, which is in the executive hangar next to Elite. Elite's been a wonderful host um, for everything that we're working on and has really been working with us closely. We had our big walk yesterday morning at the airport and um, so we're about there. It's uh, terrifyingly close 
for somebody like me, I'm having a lot of stress dreams, and um, but we're about to have it locked in. It's been a challenge. Um, our budget was cut just about four weeks ago. Um, did not see that coming. So like right now, I don't even have trash service lined up. So I've got some weird things that are still hanging out. Um, we did get some press by the city in social media, which uh, sent us a lot of volunteers, which was awesome. The public has been um, signing up and offering their pickup trucks and their children to help. And um, a couple of important things is that any time spent on the show is uh, community service qualifier. So children and adults who need community service hours for different reasons can get a ton of them at this show. The uh, length of the day, they can break it into shifts, but even if they can come work the Thursday or Friday for load-in, we can get you all your hours in one place. And um, it's going to be a really robust program. We've got the food trucks, the beer garden, live band, uh, we've got our, our FAA-approved air boss and an announcer uh, who's paid who will have that higher level of music and our aircraft identification um, throughout the program. So we've really, we've got a really robust program and we're down to brass tacks. Um, and then we'll be, I'll be doing the walkthrough with the volunteers the Saturday before and then we start load in. Thursday and Friday before the show. So you'll see a lot of activity. The main thing is to tell you is that we are really taking over the airport. And in the past, we've tried to just carve out the air show portion and protect the rest of the space for especially the north side to be able to come and go in their aircraft. We're going to start at 7. We're going to be closing the airspace by 10, 1030, pushing 11. But there's going to be so many people in the airport. We're anticipating 7,500 to 8,000 people because we are in the school year this time. We're normally in June, and a lot of people have left town. We're in the school year. We're focusing on education, and we do anticipate a much bigger crowd. So we are trying to figure out where to shove cars in for parking, and we are starting to look at taking up more of that space in between the hangars on the north side. So it is, and then for the air show to move down the field, if you recall, the air show had to get pushed to the west because of the crowd and people in their hangars. And so the demonstration area was really offset from center field. So the Airbus has been working very hard to get that down to center field, but it does require uh, that we don't have people on the west side of the airport, um, even in their hangars, is the preference. So we'll be sending out notifications uh, through LOPA and through all immediate all chains that we have. I try not to do a paper campaign just because that would be a mess on a day like last night when the wind blew. Um, our liquor license application is up. It's over by Flight Deck Grill on the wall, and that hearing is on the 22nd, and that's to be able to operate the beer garden. And um, we're almost there, and so. You'll see communications from us. We've got to do a neighborhood notice, although we really don't have neighbors to have to tell, so we kind of get the benefit of that thousand feet, and um, unfortunately. And uh, but tell your friends. We'll have the traffic signs up. We're working on the final details on that um, for the traffic impacts that day. And then uh, just to note that for pa parking, if you don't come into the field and park because you could you know you will have hangar passes we'll just do those electronically and you can print those if you need them or have them on your phone you can get to your hangars you just probably can't move your airplanes much but we are the city did allow us parking all the way down Rogers Road again and because of the underpass so people can come through the underpass to come over and then they did grant us parking on both sides on St. Brain Road and then uh, Levi's working on the formal agreement to park in the parking lots that are on St. Brain Road in addition to everything, but that first is going to be on the field, and then that's where we're going to bleed off, and then people will naturally park on some of those once they see people parking there. So we did get as much as we could. We will not be parking in the field that the county bought that was Sky Pilot Farm. They did not approve that because they don't know that it's ready for cars to be on. So we've gotten as much parking as we can to mitigate that headache. And uh, we've got a robust program, good exhibitors, and we go until 5. So we're trying to kind of drag out the day, make as much money as we can to make up for this um, budget cut through the beer garden. Um, that's Fletco. And then they'll be serving Oscar Blues and some of the local beers. And then they will be um, selling and giving the profits to our Friends of Vance brand nonprofit. 
So we have an income generator there, and we are uh, probably going to sell VIP parking uh, to generate some income as well. So we're doing as much as we can. If anybody's interested, we need our airport people there. Um, you bring guidance. You can blow a whistle and tell us if somebody's doing something they shouldn't or if they've wandered outside of the barricades. Um, our barricade area is very, very large, but it's white barricade. It's very clear. Um, that also preserves our beer garden space. So it's um, be sure you come through the authorized entrance and exit so we can get you banded if you want to use the beer garden. And then um, you just have got good eyes on the field and you've got fire extinguishers in your hangars. And so in the event that something small happened and you could grab a fire extinguisher and help, that would be wonderful. And if it happens large, we have all of our emergency response plans in place for that. So we're, we're about there, but I'd love another six months to work on it. <laughs> but it's time. It's time. And then uh, September 14th, 7 a.m. to 5. And then for those who might be interested in the next opportunity, um, I've put a pin on September 26th of 2026. Uh, for our biennial tradition. We'll see if we have anybody left on the team at the end of this one. Melinda, thank you so much you for bet. all of your effort in that. It's and been a for long the road. I know it's been a lot. <laughs> Dan knows, right? Yeah. We are it's incredibly grateful for you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Shook. Uh, Melinda, what was the reason given for the budget cut and who cut it? Yeah, if you can, you speak to that. I could talk to that. The uh, airport advisory board, or, or we originally uh, asked for forty five thousand, but there was only thirty seven and actually approved in the budget. So it's not really so much a cut as they just didn't approve the full amount that was asked for. Go ahead. We didn't know about it until like four weeks ago. So. Um, I've been uh, asking anybody that we were paying for services to sponsor them and or to do a cost share. And then uh, we did ask our performers if they could cut. And some of them are coming in at half of what they bid us. And um, some of the expenses that we can control, I've been trying to get those dialed in tighter. And then in the end, um, I may be paying for a really big party <laughs> on my Southwest card. So we'll see. Mr. Dean. Yeah, for Levi, a couple, kind of a two-part. Um, does the city actually have a budget set aside for the air show, or is that ever a thing? Or, it's, or So it actually comes out of the airport's budget. Okay. Yeah. Um, and is it possible that uh, this show, I'm kind of asking you, does really, really well, if they could potentially petition for 2026 of a bigger budget to say, look, that we've done a good job, um, it's worth your while to, to have it, uh, maybe to, to ask them for a bigger bigger percentage. I mean, every budget season's a, a new opportunity to make a new ask and put the justifications for that. So, Can yeah. you ask ahead of time, or does it have to be sort of for that, that season for the budget? Well, to get the budgeted money, you have to do it in the budget process. So, okay. I mean, it's always good to have the discussion, but it'll have to come out in the budget. Process. So, is it possible that you could make a note for yourself? I know two years down the road, but make a note to, to try to like ask for uh, potentially a bigger budget for, for the. I think the best thing would probably do is, is you get into the next air show, kind of seeing what it would take, you know, what it costs is increased, and kind of starting to work the figures from that end. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, M Mr. Dean. I'll just kind of go through that. That because of the budget timeline for 2026, that means you're putting it in in the first half of 2025. Yeah. Um, historically, I will not be on the board at that point. I'll be termed out. So a note to the other board members. Mm -hmm. Historically, when there's been a dramatic change in the budget because of a strategic priority or something else that's happened, um, the board has written a letter to council asking them to consider the increase, the change. Um, so keep that in the back of all of your minds for next year that that may be an appropriate action for the board to take. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Other Vice Chair Jordan. I'll just take that opportunity to say that um, we our budget we had larger sponsors in the past. We had some large sponsors. We have had no large sponsor. Um, we didn't get our budget. We didn't learn that we had the blessing of the city until late December. So we missed all the January first uh, corporate contributions uh, opportunities. So that has been where normally we only took 25000 from the budget and then augmented it with fifteen to twenty five in contributions, um, major sponsorships, 15000 
we didn't get any. And so it's like United Rentals sponsoring the scissor lift and um, the air shows cutting back on their expenses and things like the performers. Um, so we did miss that opportunity and it seems um, shocking given how long we've been trying to get an air show going and because uh, it was slated for 2023 um, before. So, and then we did end up with an expense for the air boss. We had an air boss in our pocket and then we lost him. And so since we weren't doing 2023, so we've been, we've had just some pitfalls that have added up to where we are today but all that also to say that again and it was brought up really well in our last meeting that the airport represents an economic engine for the city it produces millions of dollars and we have the thing that that strikes me at the core is a um things being planned around the airport. And I did mention before that or the original plan in that space was storage. And while storage would prevent a problem for an aircraft, we had discussed a straight in to the storage that lined up with the runway, gave us just a nice paved area, low lights, no trees, so that we could just consider that an extended runway. Mm -hmm. And that went through like three different storage companies that it never came to fruition. Um, we're, you know, we still have a lot of land around us, but to recognize not only the asset that the airport is to the city and the contributions financially, but the number of people and businesses that are impacted by anything that affects our airport is, it just can't be said enough. And it was why a handful of years ago, I proposed that our annual report have some more content to it mm -hmm. to emphasize what goes on at the airport and that at that time it was from more of a goodwill standpoint and to educate the public on business activities and um, the other operations because we don't want to be just labeled as a, a hobbyist airport like they're calling Boulder and we've really worked to present to the public and to city council, what happens at our airport is not just a bunch of flight schools and GA pilots um, just burning gas, that there's a lot that goes on there and a lot stems from there, a lot comes through here, a lot gets generated here. And we had a lot of speakers last month talking about what they do on the field. Nobody knows about that. And so a decision, you know, any kind of decision around the airport impacts so many people. And I think we get that gets lost is because when people look at the airport, they see a bunch of buildings and they don't see faces with those buildings and they don't see businesses and they don't see um, income. And we have a lot of spin tech guys at our airport and um, there's just a lot that goes on there. And so the air show, we're focusing on the future of aviation and aerospace. And that was really driven by the pilot shortage. And um, we've stayed with that and then our tie with the Innovation Center. So we are talking about the future for future aviators. If we don't have an airport, and we don't have any front range airports. We don't need any, you know, we, our aviators are all going to have to go someplace else, and that isn't what we want either. But the focus being that there are in, so many income streams being generated from that airport that are um, missed and not seen because all you see are just um, zigzaggy roofs when you look at it. So the air show, to be there and be a representative um, of the airport and encourage everybody on the field to come enjoy the day, if you need to fly, you need to get out of there early um, and get your plane out before people show up and cars get parked there, though. But try to stay and come enjoy it and relax and then be ambassadors for the airport as well. And um, and if you want us to, if LOPA would like an information table or um, any you know anything like that that we can do, and if you have any ideas for that, we still got time. So we got like 36 days, got lots of time. Thank you. Three or six days doesn't seem like a lot of time, but thank you. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other board cat? Any other board comments tonight? Councilmember McCoy, any comments from you this evening? Sure. Um, thank you. Uh, I want to uh, thank the audience uh, for coming and talking tonight. Uh, you know, this is democracy in action. This is what it's all about. We want to hear from you. I want to thank our our um, uh, city staff for your. Uh, your deep understanding of these uh, technical issues and everything. I, I want to thank all of you for your service to your community. It's very, very important. We can't do this without you. You know, I have a, a vision uh, for the airport somewhat. I, I'll, 
uh, I've uh, spoken with Vice Pre uh, Chair uh, uh, Jordan before a little bit when you came to, uh, I think it was our council retreat, uh, maybe, or it was another event. And, um, uh, you know, I'd love to see us expand the, uh, uh, that main office there, that building, and put in things that we talked about, like restaurant and, and um, meeting rooms and, and uh, museum and, uh, you know, some sort of sales and maybe um, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, I think that's uh, the way to make it uh, there. I'd like to see, hey, if uh, Boulder is getting rid of their stuff, I was on when we were having problems with the, the as a liaison, when we were having problems with the uh, jump uh, school uh, and uh, group. And uh, what we found is, is that people uh, needed to embrace them. And now they're such an intricate part of the airport. I, I can't imagine uh, the airport without them. And so, uh, you know, when some of these new uh, concepts and ideas come, we need to uh, embrace them. Uh, uh, it may not um, bring us uh, individually uh, or some group uh, some sort of profit, but it might make uh, it just that much more of an active spot because I feel that the more active it is, the more people you have involved, the more people you um, have participating out there and feeling that community that you talk about, that's what you have to have. So, uh, you know, I'd, I'd love to see, and I've sent a Levi uh, email in regards to that. I'd love to see us attract uh, uh, an electric uh, playing company and use us as, a, as their poster child for uh, that. I'd love to uh, to uh, uh, see some of these uh, gliders uh, uh, be part of, a bigger part of it. If they're losing them at uh, the Boulder Airport, let's make it happen uh, here. Uh, again, uh, you you were referring to the great amount of uh, use, uh, Commissioner um, uh, Jordan, uh, and that's probably what needs to be uh, uh, further established. I think this uh, September fourteenth event is uh, going to uh, attract a lot of people. I think it's a, uh, a real great timing sort of uh, event. Uh, like you said, uh, in the past, it was kind of after school, it let out. And now uh, I think people were just blown away with the how impressive it was with the Innovation Center's uh, drone um, uh, show that uh, you're going to have some big fans uh, young and old, uh, and uh, and I think it's uh, and that's the sort of thing I'd love to see more uh, uh, any sort of use out there that we can make uh, happen um, there. Um, I would uh, I think uh, uh, to appease the community. I'd like to see us uh, move away from uh, leaded fuels, uh, uh, and uh, and I I think the sooner we get on that and uh, we start talking about uh, um, you know maybe some sort of percentage of how many uh, uh, reallocation of uh, uh, of uh, of uh, um, hangers if uh, uh, to these alternatives would be uh, uh, reasonable if that uh, if that's what it takes to get uh, uh, the community more behind you okay you can't uh, you can you can say it's unrealistic the community doesn't care they want they don't they what they care about is not getting dump uh lead fuels dumped on so we need to move in a direction uh as quickly as we possibly can reasonably as we possibly can to uh these other uh ways of not having them feel like uh, uh they are being um uh, uh you know, dumped on in, in reality. So those are the sort of things that I think uh, I'd like to see. Uh, you know, anything at all that would uh, be aviation uh, associated with is probably a uh, a wise move. And um, and so uh, I want to thank you all again for your time, your dedication, your knowledge, and your background. And uh, uh, and uh, we don't all have to be on the same page about the, the, the gasoline issue, but uh, we do have to try to uh, see that uh, this is, a, a, is a, a, a vital part of our community. It's been a vital part of our community. Uh, we just want to make sure that uh, uh, we don't lose it because we uh, can't see the forest through the trees. So 
Uh, thank you for your efforts, everybody, and, and I, I hope that kind of gave just a very broad brushed approach to how I see the airport. Thank you, Councilmember McCoy. We, we appreciate you being here, uh, filling in for Councilmember Martin, uh, but also for your commitment, your dedication, and your comments here. And you know, look forward to continuing that conversation and apologize for you having to get in and out of the room a lot, but look forward to that not happening at future meetings. <laughs> um, staff comments. Levi, Phil, you guys have said a lot tonight. Anything else you'd like to chime in on? I'm just going to talk some more. I apologize, but uh, just to let you know that the public hearing on the August 27th docket is separate from public invited to be heard, so it doesn't follow the same rules as as the public invited to be heard part. It's an actual separate public hearing, so I just want people to be aware of that, and that'll be stated at the very front of the council meeting as well. That if if there's any comments related to the public hearing part, it'll wait until that item comes up on the agenda. So that's how that works. It's a little different, and I just wanted to assure folks that. The city does have an aviation attorney coming to that meeting as well. So we will have uh, a city attorney or a city sponsored attorney uh, uh, who's an expert in aviation at that, at that public hearing as well. Thank you, Phil. Appreciate that. Appreciate the reminder to everybody. Leave anything else from you or are you good? I think I'm good. I think I, I got most everything covered there that All I right. was, I could my, fit in my brain anyway. <laughs> well, thank you everyone for sticking through two long meetings with us now. Um, I really do appreciate the engagement from everyone, board members, members of the public, um, city staff, and council members um, when you're allowed to be in the room. We appreciate all of you. Please stay engaged and um, I'll adjourn the meeting. Thank you, everybody.